Ah! For those of you that are weekend started since Tuesday. <laughs> and there's one of you have not even taken tomorrow. It's not official. Some people's weekend, some people do not have a week this week. They do not have a week. <laughs> there is no public holiday tomorrow. So, Go to work. To, it ends today. Yeah, no, yeah, talking, talking to yourself, Mike. Good morning and welcome to your favorite breakfast show. Wake up, Nigeria. Yep, you are welcome. It's the last day, of course. Eid Mubarak to all uh, Muslim faithful, to all my brothers and sisters. Uh, you said it's not the big one. It's okay. It's okay. We'll do you back. <laughs> when we reach our own turn, we'll do you back. But hey, come on. It's great to be here this uh, Thursday morning with all of you. It's going to be a wonderful show. Welcome as we bring a splash of sunshine into your face this morning. Of course. And on Thursdays, you know, we usually have artsy Thursdays. We have a whole lineup for you from great conversations, amazing food, and so much more. So make sure you keep it locked right here. Grab whatever you like to drink best, right? And mm. just sit right and look at us. I like that. Whatever you Don't like blink. to drink best. If, 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 I like that. But yeah. water, water is the best. Not cold water, warm water. My name is Mike Mesikeno. And I am Winfrey Agbelishi. Now remember, you can download our app on either the Android Play Store or the iOS Play Store. Mm. Now to get on, on, have us on, I mean, on the go wherever you are. Wherever you are. Canada. Definitely, if you're at home, you'll be watching us on Go TV 16. The ultra high frequency, the band is 49 on terrestrial. And if you also want to see MM looking resplendent in, is it a flower suit or something that she's looking in? Well, you can hit us up on YouTube, TVC Entertainment, to check her out. MM, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. It's actually an entire suit. Oh. Um, yes. It's uh, from our latest collection from the Emma Watcher brand. Ooh. And uh, yeah, so just looking fabulous as always. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, let's get straight to what we have for you this uh, Thursday morning. You know how it is, like uh, Winfrey said, it's our artsy Thursday. Yes, we have a tech is. expert this morning. Mm -hmm. Nnamdi who currently serves as the head of finance and strategy at Go Money, a digital bank in Nigeria. We're going to be talking to him uh, today on the show. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have Art Display. Yes, of course, we have Art Display. And uh, we'll be featuring Kudenuko Joseph Segla. An interesting name. He's definitely a sculptor and a graduate from the Lagos State Polytechnic. He has worked with notable Nigerian contemporary artists, Abu Jema, Fidelis, Ezedogu, and uh, Dada Oluwashu. He has so much to tell us about his beautiful, beautiful pieces. And we cannot wait to have him, him on the couch. And then we'll dive into our book chart segment where we'll be reviewing a special piece by Ernest Oma Ojo, a Nigerian consumer professional with over two decades experience as an international oil and gas professional. He is a highly motivated, well-rounded, multifaceted communications and environmental health and safety professional with additional experience working in the construction and manufacturing industries. Now he has so much, so much to talk about and he'll be here to do that. T.Y. Strings will be here also to perform this uh, Thursday morning to get us set for uh, the weekend, some people would say. Mm. Uh, yes, sir. We're live, we're live, we're live. I saw um, a third Milan Bridge, of course, wonderful place, uh, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, enough people are now putting uh, videos. Yeah, yeah actually, funny enough. Level are putting See, videos. It got open, I got yeah. it yesterday for the very first time. And I was oh. like, uh, uh, wow. So, yeah, level are making videos and all that. I'm like, nice. You know, but uh, there, there is this, uh, uh, just before Pelumi's feet, there was also someone who uh, performed the feet, who swam uh, the whole length. Dre. Mm -hmm. of a third Milan bridge, which yeah. is about 55 kilometers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, swam the whole length. He did it uh, to, uh, for a cause, anti-depression yeah, uh, yeah, well, and all of that, health. mental health and depression and all of that. And uh, he, he spent two hours, quite remarkable. Two hours, 33 minutes. Mm. Quite, remarkable, quite remarkable feat. And when we were talking about the circumstances and how uh, the water might be unpleasant, and hopefully, the water is flowing as at that part. And when water is flowing, it's not that yeah, unpleasant. Water stinks, please. Like, <laughs> How do you know? Water is not that. Uh, how do you know? It's flowing It's, it's flowing now. It's Atlantic <laughs> Ocean. It's flowing. Yes. It's flowing now. You know, but yes, I, I, I like it when people are, and it's quite relatable because you hear, uh, we, we've heard of cases of people who jump into the lagoon and all of that yeah. due to cases yeah. of mental health and yeah. all of that. So it's some sort of way in his own way to try to draw attention to the cause and uh, you know uh, I would also love to you and know. also draw attention to the fact that 
he is a swim coach as well. Mm. Mm. That's the one that's like, He's a swim coach. Yeah, Wonderful. Yeah. And still about Tobin and Bridge, uh, yeah, just yesterday, yesterday also. There was an accident. Yeah, and um, a few things I wanted to mention here. Yeah. I expect the railings. I expected the railings to be higher and stronger. I know that railings are made of some sort of special steel, and people come to yeah. steal them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the steel that is made because they are they are stronger than what you would see normally. Mm. But I know that for third Milan, it's two levels. Yeah. I wish it was higher, mm. first of all, because as someone said that the railings will not make some them will make them will not make them stop being reckless. That's not the issue. The issue is after you are reckless or whatever mistake you've made, the railings is there are there to yeah. maybe help as much as they can. Yeah. But I feel like they could be higher. Because to help, but it was a quite a very sad incident. I saw some pictures mm -hmm. and video, and you know, it was a. Um, you know, that accident. I saw pictures and videos, and it was unexplainable what exactly happened. Happened. Mm -hmm. Because how does an accident, a vehicle is involved in an accident? I heard the vehicle some assaulted. It was a downfall. It some assaulted, and then one of the passengers flew into the lagoon, according to reports and according to you know. Um, Say, I mean, naysayers, yes, people who experienced mm. the accident. And I'm like, so, how did that happen? There's quite a lot we wonder about. We'll also talk about Junior Poop later Thanks. on when we get to what's up and about. Good morning, the news on Wake Up Nigeria. I'm Mike Mesikeno. Tragedy occurred at the third Milan Bridge where a commercial bus was assaulted several times after a brick failure and flung two persons inside the lagoon. Emergency responders, FRSC and NEMA say the accident was caused by a brake failure that could not be salvaged due to overspeeding. TVC News uh, senior reporter Ayobide Ajayi reports. This is the effect of this accident. The railings is off, and you can see the speed that with which the vehicle was coming forced it to enter into this water, and two persons are still under the water yet to be rescued. We were informed that there was a crash on this uh, Thorn Melan Bridge involving an LT yellow bus by eyewitness uh, that uh, the vehicles somersaulted onto the rail, rail guard uh, many times. In the process, two occupants were flung into the lagoon, a male and a female. The Marine Police, the LASEMA, the NEMA, and uh, LASMA, all other rescue emergency services have been around to see how we can carry out rescue operations on those that fell into the lagoon. Two teams from the Nigerian police uh, mobile, I mean marine corps, turn up to assist. However, by now, we are not looking at search and rescue again. We are only trying to get to do a recovery because the first passenger, a male, was said to have jumped about two or three times before it was finally drawn, drowned why the woman did not even surface at all. So the possibility of any one of them surviving. However, we are mobilizing more civil, uh, local divers to join the team for recovery operations. The smoothness of this road since the repair is a temptation for drivers to speed and go overboard. Now, can we say that it is wrong for government to fix roads? Of course no. People who ply this road on a daily basis need to learn how to control their speed so as not to be in this danger. First responders, NEMA, stakeholders, FRSC are all trying their best. They have even employed uh, local divers to ensure that they could rescue the bodies from under the water. Ayomidia Jake, the TVC News, Lagos. We of course have to call attention to all of that and to also caution all road users to be careful as they ply the route on that third Milan bridge. Moving on from that, after years of negotiations, the European Parliament has approved a major reform of EU's migration and asylum rules. The EU Asylum and Migration Pact has been in the works since 2015. It will come into force in two years' time. It is designed to speed up the asylum process and boost the return of irregular migrants to home countries. It will also require EU member states to share responsibility for asylum seekers. Last year, saw some 380,000 people illegally cross the EU's borders, the highest number since 2016. The EU said the pact combined mandatory solidarity between member states with flexibility. Although some EU states remain opposed to parts of the agreement, it is expected to receive full approval at the end of April under majority voting. 
Under the proposed rules, the EU's 27 countries will be required to either take in thousands of migrants from frontline countries such as Greece and Italy or provide extra funding or resources instead. We took a time out now. Stay with us. We will be back in a bit. All right. Welcome back. I uh, hope you're able to catch one or two things there from that fitness uh, session. A lot of what we're talking about today, even from the first discussion into now, would be about um, uh, warnings and uh, telling, letting people know how to take care. A little bit on the dark side, but hey, we need to let ourselves know these things. Coming up from what happened on the Third Mainland Bridge and... Uh, you know, when you have the kind of, you know the kind of car you have, you see how smooth the roads are. You cannot, you should not. There's a speed limit, yes, I know, but a number of people, at the beginning of the bridge is 60, middle of the bridge is 80. Yes, you might think that 80, you might see me you're crawling, but there's a reason why speed limits were given. You cannot put a speed breaker on the express, on the highway. You cannot. If it was possible, you probably will probably do, but then, please be careful. Your life and the life of those around you are in your hands. And then coming off of that, just yesternight, you know, yesterday evening into night, we were social media was thrown into a frenzy back and forth concerning um, the passing of uh, actor Junior Pope, and uh, a number of things have come up from that. Yeah. People have spoken, given different thoughts, but what we know from what we saw was that okay, there was a mishap on in that water. We saw the bodies being, you know, brought out from there and he was laid on the ground. And then reported that he was taken to a morgue just after that, instead of maybe uh, a, a, hospital. a hospital. And uh, the morgue attendant or whoever was said he wasn't dead. Confirmed that he was. Yeah. And then we saw another video of some producer saying that they were taking him <coughs> to the river to perform rituals. And the first thing that came into my mind, rituals? You took him to the morgue first, if, they, if there was an issue. Or didn't the first thing be hospital first, even before the morgue? But then we back and forth, and then they said from there they took him to hospitals, and then three hospitals certified him dead and all of that. But there was a report at one time that, oh, he was alive and all of that. You know, everybody was going back and forth and all of that. And uh, I think majority of people agreed that this was preventable. Hmm. That's the major thing. This was preventable hmm. because he put up a video of himself the day before going heading to that particular set mm -hmm. and then you could see from from what he was saying mm -hmm. that the journey was a treacherous one mm -hmm. he was talking about taking a risk without he wasn't wearing a life jacket mm -hmm. nobody on that boat or as it were was wearing a life jacket and he was concerned for his own life because he made some pronouncements there mm -hmm. he was concerned for his own life and only for the next day according to reports as he was coming back from that set from on the set. same river yeah. that was when this mishap happened so, you know, the point is this, it was preventable. And many, a number of accidents are preventable. What could have been done better in this particular case? How could we, as a people, you know, what responsibility do we take for our own lives, as it were? Very sad incidents, and of course, we commiserate with uh, the, entire, the entirety of Nollywood, family and friends, quite a very sad one. Yeah, so but what could have been done to prevent this? Yeah, so this, this question you're asking, I'll probably um, answer from the individual's point, as you said, as an individual, what should be done? So there's, some, there's something, I mean, in life, right, accidents happen. You literally don't know when or how or in what form it will happen, and it's sad. So as much as we pray for, the, for we not to be victims of circumstances, right, we need to also make basic, no, okay, let me not call it basic, right? For instance now, I believe that um, everyone, Literally has the responsibility to literally learn certain things. Just the same way, like everyone, literally, when you're growing up, you literally learn to walk. I believe there are certain things you also should learn to do as a human being, and I feel swimming is actually one of them. I actually feel the same way you can walk, mm. right, from one place to another. How you literally know if you have these abilities, right? The same way you should actually be able to swim, no matter like at least try. Do you understand? So people say, okay, fine, yeah, water's um, shy, I'm, I'm afraid of water, and all those kind of things, right? So aside that, right, he making that video. Under no circumstances should you literally go into a boat without a life jacket. Like, even if you're a good swimmer, you should actually go, like, you're going on a boat, do you understand, organized by somebody, you actually don't, don't know, like, what, like, what can happen. Do you get, you should definitely request for a life jacket. Do you understand? And, of course, we were having a conversation earlier, and you asked me, okay, fine, whose responsibility is it to make sure that, fine, they get from the movie set? So if you literally are, I mean, in production school, they literally tell you there are certain safety 
things you must adhere to while you are producing a movie. And one of them is making sure that your crew is, is literally transported to an offset in the right circumstances with all safety measures adhered to. So yes, the reason why they were dragging the producer was for that particular reason. You literally cannot be transporting people from a location to a location or from, a, from your set to land where they probably from there get to their homes and you don't provide everything needed for them to get there. It doesn't make any sense. Then of course, the people, maybe the, the boat service and all of that. If you are running a boat service, you should have life jackets on the boats. Because apparently it seems like that route, those who ply that route, there are, are no life jackets. They are pro swimmers. There are no them. life jackets and all of that. And now, you see, there are some situations um, where I have worked with or I've heard of some multinationals, even multinationals, when they arranged something and they tell you that, okay, they've paid you so much that all they want is for you to come yeah. on set, mm -hmm. then that's where they cater for you, and then once you leave set, they're no longer a re responsibility. Mm -hmm. That happens. I don't know if that kind of arrangement was in And even, even if that was the case, right, as a producer, you are literally meant to go the extra mile. If they still teach you in productions, you go the extra mile, especially when, they, when you know there's a dire situation like that and anything can happen. It's your set. Anything that happens, they go back to that movie and literally say, okay, fine, they were leaving your set. You didn't make sure that, fine, whatever transportation was provided literally had the necessary safety measures. I don't know. I just think, I mean, we should just take better care. I mean, he made the video the first day because mm. he recognized the dangers. Yeah. Do you understand? And then it's shocking that the next day you still go on the boat without a life jacket. So, no, so, you, so you uh, also, a second one could have been it's his personal, yeah. personally. Yeah, what, personally, what, of what, what you could have done for insist. your own self at, at, insist. At, you know, insist, insist that you get a life jacket in that jacket. particular place. And if there's no life jacket, probably you don't go. You don't go, yes. You don't go, yes. especially in those kind of situations. I mean, mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean. Bad people talking. Talk, talk. okay. You know, what, what, are, what, are, what are your thoughts about all of this? I know. Um, it, well, you know that this yes, sort I know. of story hits home. Like it, it, it really it, it hits, hits home. Yes, I know. So, but I guess I think that's why I'm being quiet, yeah. um, so that I do not break down, because it's a very emotional one uh, yeah. to think that um, this could have been avoided. Um, I know that we are very used to practice. As a, we, are, we practice a lot of. Um, we don't demand for certain things even in our organizations, because we do not, first of all, we don't know our rights. And it is from not knowing, it is from not signing certain contracts that, you know, a lot of things are missing in, you know, in, in, in communication and in due process and due diligence. Um, so f first off, if, what, if there was a water scene or whatever, whether they were going through, through, through whatever, whatever, it should have been demanded that the actors on set, the production crew should have demanded for a life jacket. Even if their life depended on it. If they had to do like a mass action to ensure that they do not get on that boat without a life, with a li without a life jacket or they are not getting on that scene or whatever, it should have been done. But they shouldn't have gone through that whatever without a life jacket. They should have insisted. So first of all, I think it comes from a place of knowing our rights and demanding for it, no matter the place or, or whatever circumstance, whatever situation we find ourselves. I would not want to talk further on this matter. I right? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a, this is a wake-up call to everyone, even in your own work, <coughs> where you're working. Do you have a first aid box? you know how to administer basic CPR, cardiopulmonary uh, pulmonary resuscitation, as it were. Do you have a basic first aid? Can you treat basic injuries as well in your workplace? Is there a first aid box there? You can go out there, talk to your HR or whoever, get first aid box, get stuff there to ensure that some things like this that are preventable do not happen. It commiserate with everyone and uh, quite a sad one there. Let's just take care. Well, it's a tech and finance at the same time. We have Namdi Ehirim in the house. He is uh, the head of finance, Go Money. And we have a topic we're talking about, understanding your finances in 2024. Namdi, it is great to have you. You are welcome. It's lovely to be here, Mike. Okay, so what, who is Namdi? What does Namdi do as the head of uh, uh, at, at Go Money? Who is Namdi? 
Okay, thank you. So um, Go Money is a digital banking product. Mm. Um, so we provide personal finance solutions to everyday digital natives, right? So if you want to um, open an account, send money, receive money, everything around managing your personal finance solutions, um, we are um, a one-stop shop for that. Mm. Um, what I do as head of finance um, is pretty much just think through um, the financial strategy of the business. So ensuring we keep the lights on, stay viable, but also ensure um, our customers can get the optimal financial value from the product. All right, so who needs Go Money? Um, I'd say pretty much everyone who has a mobile phone, right? Mm. Um, I'd say everyone who has a mobile phone because we're digital only. So um, if you don't um, have a mobile phone, you can't access the product. And I would say everyone who has a mobile phone because everyone has personal finance issues, right? Mm. Um, and when I say issues, I don't necessarily mean um, problems. Okay. It could be opportunities. Yeah. Um, it could also just be making sense of the different aspects of um, your personal finance um, related issues, right? So. so how does Go Money work with all your other financial institutions like the bank and all of that? How do you incorporate all of that? How does it help one manage or understand their finances? Okay, um, for starters, I'd like to say, um, I mean, we are, we consider ourselves a, we consider ourselves a banking solution in our own right. Um, we are, um, we have relationships, very solid, solid regulatory relationships with one of the more established um, legacy banks, which ensures that one, we are regulated by the central bank. Um, and I think that's a very important thing to point out because in this climate where um, we see a lot of things, uh, um, going bust, we see um, a lot of fiscal, um, not necessarily um, a lot of fiscal, um, just like irresponsibilities across players. Um, we um, we are well suited under the, under the regulatory umbrella ourselves, um, and we also take corporate governance seriously. So that's one arm. How do we relate with the other um, institutions around us? Um, we. One, um, try to ensure um, the product works um, in terms of our interactions. We don't have transaction failures. We don't have um, um, any issues around fraud um, because we ensure we have good um, synergy with other players in the space. We ensure if there are any um, issues raised, we can um, address them based on the relationships we have with other players in the space. And I think it's one um, large um, ecosystem, right? Mm. It's very symbiotic. Like you provide okay. value and you provide I trust um, to your customers, to other institutions, and you receive it in the receive same give and take. way as well. Wonderful. So how does a personal, how does somebody now understand and manage their finances better? Like we said, this is 2024, it's a digital age. Yeah. A lot of things. Now you said everybody, once you have a phone, you can need it. Prior to that time, I mean, I can't remember, I have a checking account. I can't remember when last I ever yeah. signed or anything. You had to go to the bank to do a lot of things. But digitalization, especially in the banking sector, which I think, which no, no, I think, I know it's around the world. There's a lot that we do when it comes to interbanking that doesn't even happen even in more developed countries. Yeah. So we are in the forefront in that regard. So with all the digitization and all of that, how does one understand and manage your finances in 2024? Yeah, I think it's very, very um, interesting times, right? Because like you said, we are setting the tone for innovation in yeah, the financial in finances, space. we are. Um, it's a very interesting time because... I mean, um, we bring a lot of interesting value. So I mentioned all of the um, standard features that the product has, but this is very important for people to um, take advantage of now because there's a lot of um, financial uncertainty um, mm. going on, right? And a very key thing at this time is to stay informed and to stay educated, right? Mm. And um, Financial literacy is something that we bring to the fore in the sense that, one, we ensure um, we educate our customers with the content we put out. Um, we ensure we also help our customers make sense of everything that goes on um, on a policy level as well, right? Because um, that's not necessarily something they teach everybody in school. Yeah. That's also necessarily something that um, you can read a newspaper and like make sense of, right? So we try to um, keep our customers abreast and we try to make sure they have the right tools to um, act accordingly after educating themselves, right? Mm. So I think um, in that 
on that front, we provide um, a lot of value. But I just think in the general climate, right, we need to do a lot of things better. We need to um, budget and save better. Mm -hmm. We need to understand our investment options um, a lot better. We need to be able to avoid debt traps, right? And also when it comes to uh, more niche things like planning for your retirement or planning for specific life goals, you need a solid partner that would be able that to hold your hand. And this is, like I said, this is not something um, that is taught to everybody. And it's like what we're talking about, um, what you were talking about in the last segment, right? How swimming is a basic life skill, um, just like walking. I think understanding personal finance is a very basic life skill, right? Mm. Being able to access financial freedom is a very basic life skill. And that's what we're here to do. Exactly. Now, something when uh, a lot of a place where people have a lot of fear is losing their money, and that's yeah. where security. I don't know what if I'll call it financial security or I don't know what term I'll use here, yeah. but securing your finances as it were, if it's somewhere, how do you come in in that regard? How 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 can one stay safe in this place? I mean, people use uh, with the advent of blockchain, cryptocurrency, yeah. and all of that. We, of course, it's supposed to be the very secure, but then we've had cases of even those kind of uh, situations being hacked and cyber security has to come in. How far does one need to know about maybe cyber security and all of that when it comes to securing your finances? Yes. I think that's one of the downsides of interesting times, right? So when you say interesting times, it means a lot of brilliant people with interesting ideas come to the front, come to the fore to innovate. But it also means a lot of bad faith actors um, pick interest and come to the fore and innovate around um, this type of things. And as more people move to the digital economy, we see a lot of bad faith actors moving to the digital economy as well. So it's our responsibility as financial institutions, like you said, to ensure our customers are secure to ensure they also understand how to navigate cybersecurity. I think that's something the regulatory body, um, the CBN, is taking a very, very solid, um, it's taking very solid steps in that direction, right? We've seen um, policies around um, KYC initiatives, um, yeah. ensuring people um, provide the right and updated information to their financial institutions mm. um, so they can have the right checks and balances in place. Um, and that's something um, that, one, we have adopted wholeheartedly. We believe in the direction of these sort of reforms. And again, it's something we've also um, educated our customers about, right? So um, we speak to our customers about um, this type of issues on our platform as well. Um, you don't need to go into a bank. You can sort out your BVN related issues. You can sort out your NIN, NIN related. related issues as well. Um, and there's also just the periodic sensitization, right? I think about um, a month or two ago, we had this cybersecurity week we had an entire week-long campaign sensitizing our customers on best practices um, how to move around with your passwords on different platforms how to uh, manage your account how to manage the information you I share like that because that's knowledge that not only for finances but generally every other thing it's a, it's a digitized thing. world and all of that and like you mentioned we're talk, talking about managing passwords and all of that that is knowledge that they could use also somewhere else. The, so again, it's back to what you were saying. Like it's a very, very basic um, life skill, and mm -hmm. um, it's even more important because we have a lot of us who are um, relatively younger, more tech savvy, and who can figure these things out on our own. Mm -hmm. But with the way we are moving to a cashless economy and a more digitized world, there are people in other generations who these things wouldn't come very naturally, very, natural to, very to, easily to. Right. That's why we need to sense it. Exactly. Disseminate information and ensure that people exactly, get to know this. Exactly. Exactly. Where is there? Any, like, what's the one-stop shop for people to get in contact with you and all of that website or where? Okay, gomoney.global. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much. This was quite uh, enlightening as it were. I hope people can uh, get in touch with what digitization is all about and, of course, key into this. Thank you well very done. much, Mike. Thank you very much, Andy. Yeah. All right, that's it. hope you're able to catch one or two things. So let's head over to the kitchen. MM is right there on standby. MM, what's up? What's happening in the kitchen this morning? Well, 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 well. <laughs> we have Chef T Flo here with me in the kitchen. And this morning, she's about to make native spaghetti. So um, I, I was asking her earlier on, what's the issue with the native native? Last week, she had native, we had native rice. Yes. And now we are having native spaghetti. Maybe next week we'll have what, native yam porridge? Yes. <laughs> And she says it's because she's native. Uh, well, anyways, um, anything native is welcome here um, in the kitchen. So, yes, talk to us about our ingredients. What are we using? So, for I'm our native, native spaghetti. spaghetti, which I have my spaghetti here. Okay. I have my veggies. What this vegetable is, is that? Uh, Saint Leave and uh, curry 
leaves. Ah, okay. I have my locust beans, I have my ugu, my crayfish, my sauteed meats, my dry fish, my pomo, and the meat pepper, onions, and stockfish. This is a season cube. Okay. And salt. And salt. Fantastic. Um, I like all the you know, the, the, the vegetables you're using today, um, curry, sand, ugu, that's a beautiful marriage of not just healthy mm. nutrients, but um, healthy flavors as well. Because curry has its own flavor, scent leaf has its own flavor, and then mm. with the, you know, addition of ugu on mm. it, I think it's just a match made in heaven, if you ask me. Okay, and then we're using stockfish. Yeah. Wow, stockfish. Because I'm preparing it to spaghetti. So I wanted to bring out the native taste and the aroma. Wow. You're going all the way. Yes. This is a whole nine yards. Okay. Um, so let's begin. What are we starting with? I'm bringing my spaghetti. Okay. You know, I always assumed that um, the tiny spaghetti really doesn't need parboiling right. because it's so fragile mm. and like before you know it why i'm really quickly. because of the starch i'm trying to remove the starch ah okay okay yes so we are going for native and healthy right yes okay great so um let's begin um so we're going to heat up our water and then parboil the right the spaghetti uh so while we're parboiling our spaghetti um talk to talk us through the process for our sauce the sauce after parboiling my spaghetti i'll be eating my hoi Adding my onions and uh, the dried um, pepper. I'm pouring the locust beans, mm -hmm. the mixed pepper. I'll leave it for like a few minutes okay. to fry. So after that, I'll be adding my Nala. the protein. Yes. Okay. And um, the stockfish yes. and uh, the protein. Yes. Goat. Is it goat meat? It's cow meat. It's cow meat. Okay. It looks actually looks like goat meat. It's cow yeah. meat. Okay. So it's already been marinated. I see. Yes. And steamed. That's a lot of stockfish. I mean, you're so generous with this stockfish. It's just so many of them. Yeah. All right, guys, if you're just joining us with me in the kitchen, is Chef T. Flo, and she's making native spaghetti. And we're not just talking half native or part native. She's going all the way native with all the ingredients that you'd possibly need. If you're making, you're cooking your soup, like your eforiro, for my four year I have my special special spice I use. Ah, okay. But I have uh, my special You're not using the special size spice in here. No, I'm not using it for this is spaghetti. I'm using it for any kind of soup. You know there's actually one more ingredient which is the star of this dish that we forgot. Oh, yes. The palm oil. The palm oil. Yeah. Where's your palm oil? My palm oil is on. <laughs> The palm oil is somewhere because, I mean, the palm oil is actually what brings together mm -hmm. that. That's what adds that nativity to, you know, the native native. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it local. All right. All right, cooks. So we're going to begin, begin cooking in a bit. Um, yes, so we have our, we're going to pop with our spaghetti pretty soon and then make our sauce for our spaghetti. So, yeah, it's a one pot dish. It's not, you know, um, yeah, it's a one pot dish. Everything is going into one pot. Pretty excited about this morning's recipe. I hope you are as well. Do not forget to use the hashtag Wake Up Mind on TVC to send in those comments on what you think about Star Dish this morning. We're going to quick break. The show continues shortly. Stay with us. Thank you so much for staying with us on this amazing episode of Work Up Nigeria right here on RT Thursday. And of course, I have with me right now a very important guest that's actually about to take us on a journey of his art creations, right? So his name is Kudenuko Joseph Segla. Now, he is a sculptor and a graduate from the Lagos State Polytechnic. He has worked with notable Nigerian contemporary artists, Abu Jema, Fidelis Eze Odogu, and Dada Uluwashim. He's currently a full-time studio artist working as a sculptor at the Oshodi Arts Gallery. Now, Joseph has participated in several arts exhibitions, such as the Lagos Arts Expo, Art House Auction, Adodo Arts Festival Exhibition, SNA October Rain, and so many others. Welcome to Wake Up Nigeria. Welcome. How are okay. you doing today? I'm fine. All right, amazing. Now tell me about your journey into the world of arts, right? Tell me, is this something, at what age did you realize that art was your thing and that's what you wanted to do for the rest of your life? Right from my mm -hmm. childhood. Mm -hmm. Well, we started with basket weaving mm -hmm. and ceramics because we have an auntie that does 
Mm -hmm. That is a portrait. Okay. Yeah, she does that, mm -hmm. and that's where we start from. Mm -hmm. Along the line, when I go to secondary school, I decide to go to art class. From there, I build it up. Mm -hmm. To the high institution. To the high institution. Amazing. And since then, you've literally been sculpting. Yes. Great. So now. Especially based. Sorry? On, I base on sculpture. On sculpture. Yes. Okay, amazing. So now, if you base on sculpture, can you also paint and draw and all yes, of that? Yes. Yeah. I also do. Why did, you, so that, why did you decide to base on sculpture? Because that is what I have passion for. That is what you have passion for. I want to feel my work around. I want to feel okay. it. You don't not want just to flat surface. It, not flat surface. Okay. I want the three dimension. Three dimension. Amazing. Yeah. So how long did it take you to get to this point of, like, of, of knowing your craft? Well, I always get my crafts mm -hmm. through what is going around. Okay. Or what I say mm -hmm. and what is happening around me. Around you? Yeah. All right. That's where I get my inspiration, inspiration from. from. Okay, amazing. So now tell me about this particular um, sculpt. Now, what is this? What does this represent? Yeah, this special one is, I titled it Ujurito. Ujurito, what does yeah. he mean? I saw. I saw. Yeah, because okay. the eyes have seen a lot of things in life. Ooh, okay. Despite all the circumstances, mm -hmm. but the life is still, mm -hmm. they want to see the good awesome. news. And that was inspired by your um, experiences as well? Yes, yes. Okay, amazing. So now tell me, how long did it take you to carve this? And then what material is this made out of? It's made of wood and metal. Wood and metal. So the major sculpt is what type of wood? It's uh, koso. Koso. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So when you're sourcing materials for your arts, do you actually go to for, for, do you like fell trees and then carve it and all of that, or do you have a place where you just go and buy and then? Work yes, it? I have a place that I just normally go and get my wood. Okay. If I want to work on wood, mm -hmm. and if I want to work on metal. I know where to you know sort where my. To if sort. I want to work on junks, mm -hmm. discarded mechanical parts, yes. I know where to get. All right. This from. Okay. Now tell me now, Ojurito. 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 Yeah. Okay, tell me, how long did it take you to sculpt this? Yeah, it took me about a month. About a month? About a month. Okay. But not every day working. Okay. okay. Because once I work more on it, I'll move to another. To something else. I do. All right. So before you um, get to, to this point, when you, before you start, do you first draw it out, what you have in mind, or do you just sculpt it and as it goes? Yes. I first do the market, the market. which is the smaller version. Oh. I made the smaller version with okay. clay mm. first. Cast it with fiberglass. Okay, with clay. Yes. Okay, and you cast it before you now start. Before I proceed to the main work the main work so tell me like what's what did you use i mean this is wood right so how yes. did you tell me what was the process like what was it like using by using chizu, mm -hmm. chizu. gorge okay and those patterns on it how were they created it's yeah, also by food. it's also by chizu also by chizu yes, one after to, the other yes to create the effect wow the texture wow. it's the texture exactly yeah. it's actually such detailed work all right, so tell me about the second one, now the metal work. Yeah, the tell metal me about one. That one. I titled it Beauty Ewa. Beauty Ewa. Yeah. What does that mean? Beauty has come? Yes, <laughs> beauty in the art. Beauty because in the art. Um, it's natural. Even okay. though the color you find it, the different material used there is uh, natural. Okay. They all come out in the natural color, which means you can still be natural and be, and be beautiful. Beauty. Okay. Because God has given everybody the beauty. The beauty <laughs> is in you. Yes, the beauty yeah. is in you. Now, tell me, what inspired that particular um, artwork? Yeah, it's due to one of the lady I saw mm. on my way going on I mean, three days ago. Mm. Okay, yeah. okay. And this was... Actually made yesterday. This was made yesterday. yesterday. In one day, you finished it. Not up to one hour. Not up to one hour. Yeah. Wow, that's definitely amazing. So now tell me about that. So that was made of metal. Yes. So you just saw her. So you're just going home and you just saw her and you thought she yeah. was beautiful. Yes. And then you may tell me about the metal. I see some spoons. Yes. Yeah, Are those spoon, spoons? Okay. Yeah, spoons. Mm -hmm. Washer and spanner. A spanner there. Oh, so that There's is scrap work there. now, right? Yes. 
Okay, so with these materials discarded, you already have discarded mechanical parts. Mechanical parts. Yeah. So tell me, you said spoons. What else? Spoon, mm -hmm. washer, mm -hmm. spanner. Spanner. Okay, what's that? Boots. And what? Boots. Not, not, not. Okay, not. not. Yeah, 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 I see it. I actually yeah. see it. I mean, not stand for the for mouth. the lips. Yeah. <laughs> I see that. That's really, really amazing. So now, what's the difference between both? Why does one take you? I mean, you said okay, one month, but not working every day, and the other one literally takes you like an hour. What is the, what difference? Yeah, because is I want it simple. Okay. Not too much work on it. Not too much work. Yes. On it. Just simple. Simple. And okay. And okay. Okay. Tell me. So now, this type of sculptor. Um, Ojurito, yeah. how much would he go for? Wow. I think it's for 500k. 500k? You are making plenty of money. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Okay, so, so there was one that literally was on the screen. It looked yeah. like a dancer. It looked like yes. metal work. Tell me about that one. Yes. What, what? That is a ballet dancer. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, because I so much like sports, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my work based on gymnastic, ballet dancer, acrobatic. Okay. Except any other commission work mm. that I can work okay. on any other. Yes, any other things. thing. But for you, whenever for you inspire, personal, my personal work is sports. Really based on Why were you, were, sports. You, were you a sports person or are you a sports person? Yes, mm -hmm. from beginning, mm -hmm. but along the line. Mm -hmm. I think I prefer the art. You prefer the art because it's plenty of oh, money I now. still love it. You still love it? I love sports. You love sports. I mean, so now this particular, um, how did you create the holes? How did you perforate that particular piece? I did not perforate it. It's a coin. Coin? coin. You... Nigeria coin. coin. One naira, two naira. Yes. The 20, 2006 mm -hmm. one that made a uh, change. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I use. That's what you use. You yes. put them together. I remove the inside. You remove the inside and then put all of them um, together. How long did that together. take you? Mm, I think two weeks. Two because weeks. I first do the clay work. Mm -hmm. I weighed it on the clay work on direct. The clay. Direct. Yes. Uh, direct casting. Direct casting. Amazing. I think you're doing really great with your works and I wish you all the very, very best. Uh, you. Definitely hope to see greater works and pieces from you. Thank, soon. you. Thank you so much for being Thank here with you. us. Yeah. All right, now it's about time we head over to Kitching, finding out what's happening with MM. What's up? Oh, things are getting steamy hot here in the kitchen. With me, yeah. Chef Flo, tea flow. The tea with the flow, yes. <laughs> and that's what I like to call her. Well, this morning she's making native spaghetti. And uh, we're pretty psyched about it because it's native and it's spaghetti. I think that's a non-conventional meal. Yeah. Usually when you have your spaghetti, you have it with the regular, um, you have it with vegetable oil and not stock fish, maybe minced meats. Um, yeah, it's so we prepare it differently. No, yeah, different bell pepper, air. Veggies, ah, bell pepper. We wouldn't make it like, if we are making fried rice. Yes. But this one, we're making it like concussion rice, right? No, our native concussion rice, yes. All the ingredients that we typically use for our native concussion rice, we're using it in this recipe. So, Auntie, tea flow. Oh, yeah, over to you. Yeah. So, this is my Miss Pepe. I eat the oil, add onions. What oil? The palm oil. Okay. My palm oil, my onions, my Miss Pepe. So, I'm adding my... Cocos beans. Okay. Mm. Mm. There's something about locust beans, guys. And I think if, if you are so good with, if you like the taste of locust beans, but you don't like to see them, I think it's one I would suggest, or I will advise that it's one yes. of the first things you put in your sauce. Mm -hmm. Like this one now. We call it ilu, iru woru. Yeah? There's no how you put it first. Yeah. You still see it. But there's another locust beans. Yeah, there's another one. Yeah. The locust beans. That one is for a way Ah, okay. If you don't but like seeing that... it, you can go for that one. That one is better. There's also it. that option. Mm. Or you could just, you know, the minute you pour in um, your onions, just pour in your ear. I'm stock fish. Okay. Yeah, wow. Is that head? Is that the head? The ear. The ear. Ah, man. That's, that's the best part of the stockfish. Yes. It's got a lot of flesh. And also, so this, you're going to enjoy the flavor from the stockfish. Oh, it's just going to marinate into yeah. the sauce. It's going to give it a 
different kind of flavor. And okay. this means I can give another name. Okay. Vegetable spaghetti. Hmm. That's not bad. That's not bad because you're making a, a you're making use of a lot of because the sauce is not here. like vegetable. How do you mean? Like yes. a furry roll? Yes, a furry roll. Yeah. And now when I say when I said a furry roll before, you were looking at me as if I said something strange. It's like making a furry roll. Because that's just how you'd exactly make your a furry roll. Yes. And then you now have the, the spaghetti would be the last yes. thing you add to it. So it's like making a furry roll, yes. but with a twist, right? With this story, we are having a furry roll spaghetti. spaghetti. Yes. Aha. Or spaghetti a furry mm. roll. And what a four is vegetable, right? Yes, vegetable. What's real? roll? Vegetable spaghetti. Vegetable spaghetti. Efori roll. That What's is vero? the roll is when you turn it together. Oh. You miss everything. Okay. All the protein, the pepper. Uh -huh. you mix it okay. So we are going to call it efori roll spaghetti. spaghetti. Uh -huh. Because that's the efor. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. That's the sauce. sauce. The efor hasn't gone in cool. yet. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So when the vegetable goes in, they will call it efor, and then spaghetti. the spaghetti now goes in the last. Great. All right, you can tell we're just having fun here in the kitchen, can't you? Yes, we are. I think there's nothing wrong with having fun while you're cooking, just having a good time. I think it's that extra spice that your recipe needs, right? If you agree with me. <laughs> okay, so yes, our Efori roast spaghetti is coming pretty nicely. We are enjoying the aroma. It's not ready yet, but we are, you know, just enjoying the aroma. Uh, well, it's the top of the hour. And, uh, well, we'd like you to stay with us. The show continues shortly. Welcome to the second hour of Wake Up Nigeria, where the fun never ends. We're bringing you more entertainment and more excitement of the second lap of the show. Are you ready? Well, <laughs> yeah, if you missed the first part, you missed quite a lot. Yes. yes. Uh, finance and tech discussion or art display. And of course, uh, some uh, kitchen stuff that was happening there. It's uh, it's local spaghetti, yeah? yeah. It's the opposite of uh, is it bolognese. Okay. What was that one? <laughs> bolognese. Bolognese. Yeah, bolognese. Yeah, bolognese. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. This is the one that we have here, of course. <laughs> and uh, Chef T. Flo and MM are getting this set. Is there enough okboroko inside there? Yes, yes so. Okboroko to Oak 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 last Oak you Oak a week, right? Oak <laughs> Oak there. Oak 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 every of your favorite proteins. Is there scumbia? And it's called a furry roast spaghetti. Please. Is there scumbia? Scumbia. Scumbia. No, there's yeah, no scumbia. Mike, scumbia. No, no, there's no scumbia. Why is there no scumbia? <laughs> oh, Benya, you say you have everything no. there. But hey, hey, this recipe is definitely, definitely gonna bang, guys. It's mm. really gonna hit. The nerve. Yes, they will. <laughs> mm. All right, so just get set, chill, yeah. back for 45 minutes of fun. My name is Mike Mesekero. And I'm Winfrey Agbele. Share, remember, you can catch the show live on Go TV, and you definitely find us on Channel 16 and UHF Channel 49. TVC Entertainment.tv, yeah. of course, is the website, YouTube, Facebook, uh, at TVC Connect. We also have an app available for download on both the Android and the iOS stores. This allows you to watch us anywhere you go. Next up, we definitely have Book Chat, and uh, where we'll be reviewing a special piece by Ernest Omo Ojo, a Nigerian consumer professional with over two decades' experience as an international oil and gas professional. Now, he is highly motivated, well rounded, multifaceted, communications and environmental health and safety professional. With additional experience working in the construction and manufacturing industries, he spent close to two decades working with ExxonMobil, upstream oil and gas company, Nigeria. A brief stint with a very long bio. So just stick around for that interview. We've got TY Strings uh, to perform for us this uh, Saturday. Oh. <laughs> he thought it was already looking like Saturday, right? Eh? Because he's going to let us go into the weekend TY Strings for the performance today. Thanks for staying with us. It's time for us to go through our book review segment. And you all know we do this every Thursday. The book for review today is a special piece by Ernest Omojo. He's a Nigerian consumer professional with over two decades experience as an international oil and gas professional. He's also very highly motivated, well-rounded, multifaceted communications and environmental health and safety professional with additional experiences working in, con in the construction and manufacturing industries. And uh, this morning, he's here um, to review his book, The Audacious Faith. 
Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for the invitation. Ah, thanks for being here. Um, the Audacious Fate um, actually talked about a series of life experiences that you um, went through um, your time with Exxon Mobil and um, how you were unlawfully um, sacked and a series of events afterwards and how this, you know, affected your family and friends as well. Why did you decide to put all of that in a, in a book? Uh, essentially, uh, why I put up the, the audacious fate was one, uh, a tribute to my wife, uh, Gloria. Also, the audacious fate was written to become an inspiration and encouragement to an average mid-career family with life going on, everything seems to be going on well. <clears throat> Your career seems to be going very well. And all of a sudden, things you never anticipated start happening. Yeah. It's just like uh, when an aircraft, the pilot tells you that it's all clear weather. Mm. Uh, this flight is going to be all smooth sailing and midway there's a sudden drop yeah. in cabin pressure and there's all hell is let loose and there's pandem pandemonium in the aircraft. Mm. So that would be a classical illustration I'll give of what happened to us as a family. Yeah. Uh, things were going on very well and, then and suddenly, suddenly the crash landing there was a sudden drop in pressure yes and we were going down mm -mm. and it was travis that took close to three and a half years yeah. and the audacious fits came out of that uh, one as a tribute to my wife like i said mm -hmm. secondly uh, as a tribute to the nigerian bureaucratic process uh, that justice can come out of a system called nigeria mm. uh, because I've always believed in this nation and the audacious faith uh, is a testimony to that. And ultimately, I'm a man of faith that uh, if you believe in God, uh, the impossible can happen. That is essentially why the audacious faith was written. I mean, this is a company that you worked for for um, quite a number of years. Most importantly, you won a lot of awards, you know, credits in credence to you know your role in the company as well um and i know that in the book you sort of summed what you went through i mean that's why you even had to go the whole length to sort of seek just justice for you know what was unlawfully done to you but um what do you think was the underlying reason for that you know sudden um um for the sudden change of events mm -hmm. while you were you know at the um, company yeah uh what i would think out of the experience i went through is uh, as a man of faith uh when most times when we sit down and say our prayers that we are believing god for the next level mm. what we don't know most times is that we are actually asking for trouble so when you're asking God to take you to the next level, you're, you're also asking God, I want trouble. <laughs> because when troubles don't come, there are no elevation. Mm. So what I take out of my experience is the positives. Uh, this whole process has not made me bitter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a better person. Uh, I'm glad I worked for that organization. Uh, they, they essentially built my DNA. Uh, because I joined the organization right after my National Youth Service Corps. So I have no animosity towards the company. Uh, just the way you have in labor relationship, uh, you, you have the right as an employer to say you want to leave an organization. Exactly. So also the organization has the right to say, mm. we don't need leave your yeah. services. Yeah. Uh, so what I challenged was the process. Uh, the process wasn't right. Uh, there was a regulation. There were processes that need to be followed. Of an organization that I worked for that said that uh, that was reputable international mm -hmm. company that says that the process of achieving the result is far more 
more important to them as a result. That's what we, we, I was taught for close to two decades working for them. Mm -hmm. So I needed to challenge that process that you can't teach me this for 20 years and you are doing the opposite. Right. Yes, I can leave, but the process has to be right. Okay, let's quickly talk about um, the unexpected shift and where, you know, um, God came through for you because, I mean, that's how you wrapped up, you know, um, the book, yeah. God, Our Rock. And it was based on a few prophecies here that, and you, that you mm. leaned on to, that was what, you know, was the, you know, um, it was a, a defining moment for you and your family. Um, quickly talk to us um, about that period. Yeah, the, the defining moment, like you said, was uh, this process went on for close to three and a half years. Uh, uh, went to, went to the, the regulator in the industry, they were back and forth, uh, letters were written, uh, at the end of the day, we ended up in court, and while we were in court, there was back and forth, you know, the, 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 the judicial process is not a horse keep and jump. Yeah. And in the midst of that storm, when us, all hope seems to have been lost, because we were getting tired and weary about this whole yeah. process, yeah. and God showed forth, yeah. God intervened. Uh, I got a call from out of nowhere, because I actually wrote a petition to the president, then President Buhari to intervene. And for six months, they were very silent. Uh, I didn't expect any intervention, but I had faith that this process will come out and God's name will be glorified. And hence the book, The Audacious Faith. The Audacious Faith come, came out. That faith wasn't taken, wasn't yeah. lost in between. God finally came through. God finally came through. And uh, we're grateful. Thank mm. you so much for sharing your journey and Thank your you. life experiences Thank with you. the world. This wasn't, I'm sure it wasn't easy at all. And uh, it's also an inspiration to a lot of people going through, you know, similar experiences mm. as well. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. And uh, that's it on our book review for now. We have a musical performance by T.Y. Strings. And uh, well, T.Y. Strings will be joining us later on in the couch, but for now, we'll would enjoy his performance. Take it away, T.Y. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Igual how many do more Igual Igual How many do more it was definitely serenading listen to those outstanding vocals by T.Y. Strings. And guess what? I have him right here on my couch. Thank you so much for blessing us with your gifts. And welcome to Wake Up Nigeria officially. Absolutely. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here today. All right. Amazing. Now tell me, when you sing, where is your mind usually? That's a good question. I trust the music. I trust the feeling. I just... Mm -hmm. I just let it take you take me away. Just like my it. mind is not like my mind is in the music itself. It's in the music, it's in you what know? you're singing. Yeah, because right? I feel like that. you have to. F I feel the music first, and I feel like it always translates to the audience. All right, tell me. So tell me about the song you just performed for us. The song I just wrote. I wrote it before a show I had in Austin mm -hmm. a few months back, and um, it was basically like you know, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which is Yoruba for like we only know this present time. We don't know tomorrow. We don't know tomorrow. You yeah. know, and which is, applies in a lot of things, right? right. You know, because we only like just, we think about, we're trying to like, oh, well, answers, we're thinking about like, oh, what next? But mm -hmm. we only know about what is happening right that now. Right now. I know. You understand? And just, just to just live in the moment more, mm -hmm. you know, you know, can you feel the pain I've gone through? Can you feel the shame? Mm -hmm. But just, just bask in that moment right now and just like, you know, be a part of it rather than just being anxiety about the future. All right, amazing. Now <coughs> tell me, when did you discover that you had this talent of music and then you wanted to do it, like go into it? Okay, yeah, these are two different questions. Yes. Right? But yeah, but I've always loved music right now. And just not to sound cliche, mm -hmm. um, I taught myself how to play six musical instruments. Mm, yourself? Yeah. What are the six? I play the bass, guitar, electric, acoustic. I play the harmonica. Oh, nice. I play the percussion. I play some saxophone. You taught yourself. Yeah. Now. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've always been a voracious consumer of music. Like, okay. Because you know, when I went to school mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in Nigeria, my primary, secondary, university, college, mm -hmm. you know, but 
during that time, I would just like just be myself, just consuming different from music auditions mm -hmm. to music tutorials from YouTube. I was just enjoying, you know, from jazz to soul to pop to yeah. all, all genres of music. Yeah. I was just like that. Mm -hmm. Consumer, you know, and but I never really had intention that I wanted to do just go into music. Go into know. music, okay. Delta blues, country, okay. You, you can name it. All right. And um, during the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, I realized that you know the more time you spend with yourself, a better version of yourself you get every time. Very true. And um, you know, just been pandemic, I was working from home. I'm a software engineer, mm -hmm. so and I was just just coding at home. I was like. Man, I want more value from life than this. Okay. I want to be able to connect more to people. With people, okay. Beyond more, just I want to leave more of a legacy. Mm -hmm. And um, I just said, okay, let me pick up my first song. I wrote my first song, Shall I? During the pandemic. During the pandemic, Amazing. middle of 2021. Okay, okay. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, so now you mentioned, I was actually going to go into it, but you mentioned you're a software engineer. Yeah. You happen to work at, so at Microsoft. Yes, I do. So currently. Yeah. Amazing. So how do you balance that now? I know software is mostly online stuff and all of that. Yeah. But then again, how do you balance that literally? Writing music, performing music, putting music out, and then literally being a software engineer in such a... Yeah, that's a good question. Cause I work from home, so I work remotely. Okay. So I have that um, luxury, mm -hmm. you might say, to be able to, like, have that balance, you know, yes. just when I'm, you know, I kind of manage my time in that way, like, you know, sometimes I need to do, like, a project, I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. Next thing, I just have an inspiration to record something on the mic or mm -hmm. create something on the guitar or piano. Okay, yes. You know, and that's kind of how I'm able to like balance it out. Then, uh, of course, I try to build a team around me to have a level of structure yeah. and consistency mm -hmm. around what I do. So that's kind of how I how you balance. Okay, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, now listening to your music, despite the fact that it's literally in the local dialect, right? Yeah. And what, what state are you from? So my dad is Yoruba from Oyo State. My mom is Kogi. Okay, yeah, okay, and that is definitely Yoruba language. Huh? The song was definitely Yeah, that was Yoruba, Yoruba language, yes. yeah. So um, it's obvious, that's why the fact that it's in the local dialect, you can still tell that it has a lot of infusion and a lot of influence from for, foreign forces. Yeah. Now, you spoke about how vast you are and voracious you are when it comes to uh, music um, 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 consumption. consumption, right? So now tell me, you're growing up, what was it like? Was it mostly here? Was it over there? You spoke about schooling and all of that. Yeah. My growing up was mostly here. Okay. You know, I just went to the state for my master's. For the master's? Okay. Yeah, but I did my primary, secondary. Every school, everything. University, I went to Covenant University here. Yeah. Then from there, you know, I went. So, um, and I was lucky enough to have been a part of, uh, to have, to be grown, grown up here as being a Nigerian. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people try to do different music from there. Yes. You can be, if you not grow up from here. Yeah, true. To be part of that culture, to be part of that experience. Mm -hmm. So that way, I'm able to have that, like you said, fusion, right? Yeah, it's the fusion. I say my music is like pizza. Anybody can take Anybody a slice. Anybody can take a slice me. from me. Amazing. <laughs> that sounds well put together. Now, what do you decide, describe your style as? So I say I make Afrobeat music and yes. Afrofusion. Afrobeat and, and Afrofusion. Afro yeah. All right. Now, let's talk, talk about fashion. I see you have a lot of prints and patterns going <laughs> on. I think that's also the way your music is as well. There's a lot <laughs> going on, but then again, it comes together nicely. So now, yeah. for your fashion, is this just a statement for the music and the image you're trying to perform, or is this literally you and how you just like to dress? To be honest, this is just literally me. And it's always been like that, even before yeah. I started music. I just have my, my style. I just pick things up together and just wear it. And they're like, oh, I like your outfit. Oh, I like you. I'm like... And whether it's like a designer or like just a regular, regular clothes, yeah. I just, just put them together. I'm like, oh, I, or sometimes I can't even treat. I don't care. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just like, oh, I like what you put together. I'm like, oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? Amazing. <laughs> so now when you see yourself in the next five, ten years, tell me, who are those um, artists right now, foreign, local, that inspire you to who you want to be in the next five, ten years? Um, a lot of artists inspire me, but mm -hmm. some of the artists inspire me, like you think about artists like Quincy Jones, mm -hmm. you think about artists like, you know, Miles Davis, mm -hmm. Coltrane, people that are like Bob Marley, people that actually made impact with mm -hmm. their music, not just music that just go viral, yes, yes. just for the sake of it. That's yes, true. Um, because, yes, I understand music composition theory, I write, I create everything, I produce, I every of these things, but... I create intentional music. Intentional music. You know, and that's yeah. very important because, you know, you want the music that stands the test of time. You want the music that can connect with different people. Very true. Depending very on where they're coming from. Okay. And um, in five years, you know, like, I've been opportunity to, like, you know, be on a few. I was on ABC. Recently, I was on CBS. Mm -hmm. I, was, I had a South by Southwest festival. I was at the Grammys yes. as well. And I've just been able to, like, just get in my wings going. But I want to be able to more to have more shows, connect more people. Okay. And that's one reason why I'm also, you know, in Nigeria, you know, right now, 
spreading my music, yeah. connecting people more back. I've not been back since in the last six years. I know I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you're back now. It's I'm fine. back. You understand? Mm -hmm. But just yeah. being able to like just connect more people and just be more touchable. I want to be touchable. I want to be feelable more yes. in personality, in my mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. in my message I'm trying to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, and what I stand for, okay. and my values as well. Amazing. So I, I, I want to ask this question now. Have you ever felt that pressure of literally maintaining your line of music or literally going into doing regular stuff, maybe to get popular enough to literally now push your music? Yeah. Do you understand yeah. the question? That, no, that's a very good question. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is like, yeah, it's very, it's very, very easy. I, I don't want to mention names of artists because, no, <laughs> of course not. But you see a lot of people just... Mm -hmm. Just jump on little, little something. They're like, oh, I'm going viral. But like, yeah, ah, blah, blah. Yeah. And those things, it lose the value of what music is. Mm -hmm. You know, music itself, yes, music can be fun, right? Yeah. But at the same time, music to self should have a purpose. Should have a purpose. Should have a volume. Music is spiritual. Mm -hmm. You is. know, and um, yes, like, you know, you, I've never had a pressure. Right? I've been doing this for three years, right? Mm -hmm. Like, middle of 2021. So, mm -hmm. and thank God I've achieved a lot in short mm -hmm. period. Short period, yes. Um, but, you know, that pressure will come like, ah, do you want to do? But when I pick up my music, I'm like, man, if I'm not going to enjoy this music, if I'm not going to enjoy this music, I'm not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Okay. You understand? And okay. what music I enjoy, the music, the musician is meant to be the first listener. First listener. And of course, when you enjoy it, people now see yeah. you enjoy it and then they start enjoying it. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. I hope you like Nigerian food, even if it's uh, been a break in a while. Uh, 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 okay, uh, now. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chef I hope there's pepper in that food. Uh, that's, that food is just entering my nose. It's entering like, your nose. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so we're definitely going to head over to the kitchen right now where you have a bite and tell us what you think about it. Okay, Good? absolutely. All right, let's go. <laughs> uh -huh. Nice. Uh, welcome to the kitchen, to Y Strings. Thank you. And this is Chef Tiflo. And this morning, she's made for you a four-year-old spaghetti. Mm. I cannot even wait. So you can see the veggies in there, and you're wondering, oh, and well, it's not hard to guess, but I uh, would like you to please enjoy. Let us know yeah. what you think about it. Absolutely. Mm. A lot of hearts went into that meal, so. Uh, I can say, it, my nose is already like, it's, it's like, ah. Uh, <laughs> hey. Mm. Okay. Look. Oh, look at that. Mm. Nice. Mm. <laughs> ah. Okay. Okay. What do you think? It's very sweet. Ah. Oh. And it's it's good. It has um. It has a very rich taste. Mm. It says it's rich. When you taste it, you know you know that it has the um, traditional, of course, F4. Yeah. It's a little spicy, of course, African. Mm -hmm. We're known for our spicy. Spice, uh -huh. right? You know, vibe and um. I like the avocado in it. I like the garnishing of it. It looks healthy too. Oh, you it know, is. You know, as well. So I like right. it. Well, well done. <laughs> Chef Flo's head has swollen. Chef Flo, ah, ah. <laughs> oh, more. Uh, thank you so much, yeah. TY, for being here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, to all our guests for being on the show today, thank you so much. And most importantly, you at home watching. We hope you have a beautiful day ahead. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. 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 How are you, Blake?